I feel like as an Inuk, and I'm representing the Inuit right now, I feel like we're misrepresented in killing animals, like as if we're savages. Cause like, there's still things going on about us being seal clubbers. Like we kill baby seals and like, it's, it's like the image of us is just twisted into a, like Inuit are savages and we kill these animals and we, we don't like, we don't care about these animals, but people that all around the world that haven't explored Nunavut or the lifestyle or are educated about Inuit, you know, cause uh, we grew up, we, we come from the north or we're, we're nomadic and we have we had to survive off of the land and we had to hunt our animals and today we care about our animals and we are still facing some struggles with ships coming along the seas and everything and it's like affecting the the way the animals travel same with on land animals as well like with land development and everything like that and i feel like my people like we're seen like by still hundreds of people to this day as savages and like seal killers and we don't care about animals at all or like we live in igloos still and we need to use dog sleds to go around i feel like it's it's not being it's like many places around the globe are not in touch with the north like they should it's like i feel like it's very important to not assume but to become educated and then talk about it i guess just kind of who i am sometimes as an indigenous person just with like all the like stigma and like just the history and just the lack of education that's really hard sometimes just to walk around just trying to be a human but then someone like ask you if you still live in a teepee and it's just like i don't want to be like upset Cause it's just like, I, I understand that sometimes people just don't have that education and it's not necessarily their fault. It's just that they weren't educated on it. And like, how can you blame that person when it's not something that's taught in school? Like, of course you can get older and like learn, but I feel like, I don't know, sometimes it's kind of exhausting just to kind of have to go around and always correct things about who you are all the time and things about like your community or things about just like your identity as an indigenous person or just like hearing all the hurtful things that people say like about indigenous people or like just like the stigmas that come with it like like you know how like like alcohol like you know that's um a lot of people think that a lot of people look at that in a negative manner but they don't really look at everything that happened before it um like in terms of colonization and like residential schools, I just don't, I feel like people don't look at the root issues to these, to the problems that we face today. And that's kind of hard because it's just like, yes, like this is happening now, but it's happening because of all of this. And it's hard to get people to understand that, that it still affects us. To bounce off what um, Aurora said, I completely agree with, with everything. Um, it is really hard when you have all these um, assumptions on Indigenous people and there's a lot of things that are misunderstood and um, that are misunderstood about us. Like for me, um, if someone asks me like, like what's your nationality and then I'll say like Native American and they're just like sometimes people don't know like some people don't even know that we still exist even if someone sees like the color of my skin or if I'm wearing something traditional they automatically have this thought in their head that I'm gonna do something bad or steal something or I don't know and that's really tough. Something else that I just like want to mention too is just kind of like the feeling of like exhaust, not exhaustion, maybe exhaustion, um, it, like around like having to educate people in terms of like my identity. Cause it's just like, 
people are like, well, if you want us to know, why don't you just teach us these things? And it's just like, but that shouldn't be on me. Like it really shouldn't. Like I can, but I don't really want to. Like it's kind of hard because it's like you want people to learn. Like I ha I'm happy to, but sometimes it's just like you get asked questions that can be like Googled. And it's just like, why can't people do that? Like I'm happy to teach you about really cool things, but it's just like at the same time, it's just like other people have to be willing to put in the work. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Aurora. I, that got me thinking of, um, I wrote a, like a personal essay a short while ago of, um, so I, in high school, I had the privilege of studying in, in Switzerland. I studied abroad for one year and a lot of my classmates, you know, everyone was just Catholic or, or like, there was like two other Jewish people in, in, my, in my cohort. And a lot of the time people would ask me, you know, like, oh, like, what's this, like, I, when Hanukkah was coming up in um, December, people would ask me, like, what, why are you celebrating this? What, what is the holiday about? And, you know, I, I thought about it, because, like, Christmas is at the same time, and I was, like, I know so much about Christmas, and I'm Jewish, like, by just, like, you know, Christmas trees everywhere, like, Santa, like, maybe, obviously, that's not truly what the holiday is about, but, like, I feel like I see it everywhere and I'm not even, I don't even celebrate the holidays. So why can't people who don't celebrate Hanukkah know what that is too? Like there was also that feeling of exhaustion. Like why, how do you not know about this? Like, and so that personal essay that I wrote was just kind of like a reflection of like, sometimes that education just has to come from personal curiosity. Like as much as you can teach people and as much as they will ask, like sometimes they just have to seek it out on their own and like be genuinely like interested and willing to learn because otherwise it's just going to go kind of like in one ear and out the other like it's it's gonna it's gonna resonate for a second they're gonna say oh that's cool and like you know then they're not gonna remember it the next day I start started asking questions about other cultures and like just started recognizing that I like yes as maybe a quote unquote minority like religion in a way like people don't know a lot about my own religion but that shouldn't stop me as well from being curious about other like cultures and, and religions and whatnot so yeah just that like idea of of curiosity is like that's like the only way that like education is really going to come through is is when people are actually wanting to learn and it's coming from their own volition rather than like being like forced to in a way thanks for that um, and basically, I don't know if I've been sort of like framed into thinking this way, but when I'm like, I was like analyzing my identity and thinking about like what specific aspects of it that I feel are misunderstood and misrepresented. And I think it's really this, this Jewish aspect of my identity. And to me, Judaism is, it's a very unique part of my identity because it sort of sits very far in the posterior. Um, I don't like, I'm, I'm not a, really a practicing Jew but I'm a traditional Jew in the sense that I really look forward to my, my holiday traditions and spending time with my family. Um, my, my grandparents are quite traditional and quite religious. Um, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic that I have with my, with my religion. And when I tell people that I'm Jewish, it's interesting because I think I met my, like this version of my identity, this aspect of my identity is misrepresented from both people within that identity as well and without so when i tell people who aren't jewish that i'm jewish they go oh you're jewish like i've never met a jew you know i would i'm my my partner i'm the first jew she's ever met i think i i'm so i i just think yeah identity like as far as misunderstanding and, and misrepresented it's like people should be able to create their individualistic version of their identity regardless of you whether you fall under this branch of judaism or canadian or what whatever it may or indigenous whatever it may be also when you have to like always explain it does like get tiring as what was said earlier and it also just drains your emotions because you have to all those um that trauma I guess comes up and it's just very emotionally exhausting we have to keep explaining like why why this happened like I even heard some people say like um like why are you like my people 
are so upset about residential school still. Like it happened a long time ago, but it really didn't. Like my own grandparents went to residential school and I still feel the pain from that. So that's really tough too. As a granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor, I also kind of feel that need to, you know, educate people, let people know, like this, this is what happened. Six, six million Jews, right? Like it's, it's crazy that to think that, you know, my grand, my, my grandfather just passed away. So, but you know, this whole generation is, is slowly passing away that, that our, our kids aren't going to be able to, you know, meet these people who went through it. Right. And actually feel their pain. Like we have and, and feel that connection like we have. Right. And that's why I feel it's so important to, to talk about it and, and educate people, right? And why when I was younger, especially for my bat mitzvah, I dedicated my bat mitzvah to um, a Holocaust survivor's younger sibling who, who perished in the Holocaust, who never got a bat mitzvah of her own. And I dedicated mine. Um, and I don't know, that's always been such a, a special part of my life for me because I was able to, you know, teach so many people at such a young age of, you know, this is what happened and this is my connection to it and people need to know and understand and and uh so that it, it never ever ever happens again right yeah if i can add as well i was gonna say thank you both for for sharing that I, I, it's really like i know it's vulnerable to share so i appreciate it but um i was gonna say that sometimes like just touching on that idea of like emotional trauma that can come up with like explaining these things because they're obviously really hard to talk about. Um, um, I think that obviously it's it's a long process to make this change, but like there, you know, it's like Aurora said before, it, it shouldn't fall on our shoulders to explain this. And there are so many like movements out there of like making systemic change and, and changing the curriculum of, of schools everywhere to just like, add a diverse like education of maybe not just Jewish and indigenous cultures, but so many others as well. Just like broadening those horizons is like a change that needs to come at that level. Because like you said, Aurora, I think that was really well put. It, it shouldn't fall on our shoulders. It's not our responsibility as much as we would love to share. And it's important for people to learn. Um, the Like feeling the backlash between like both communities and like finding like a place in that because that's something that I struggle with all the time with being in school for social work, because I, I know the harm that social work has caused to Indigenous people through residential school, through 60 Scoop, through the Millennial Scoop. And so it's, I have a lot of anxiety about it lately, because I'm just like, I don't want to like harm like my own people, because I have to think about it, because I've been taught in this Western colonial perspective, and yes, some of that's valuable. But at the same time, I have never learned anything that will help me benefit like my people in terms of like land-based learning and figuring out how to incorporate culture and traditions and making sure that even if we take kids like in foster care, they still have that connection to culture. So that like, that's something that I've been grappling with just like internally with myself and my identity. It's just like, okay, well, like, how can I make it like, okay. It's kind of like walking in two different worlds. That's how I like to describe it. Cause I'm over here in like the Western, like colonial thing, but I've like over here dying to like learn my culture and my language and my traditions and all that and that's and it's really hard